Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord to everyone. Uh, first, I want to say. First, I want to say this is my first time doing this. Uh, this online live Facebook live business. You know, I've never. You know, I preach, of course. Uh, you know, I've had <clears throat> preaching, but I've never done this live like this. So. Um, Bear with me if I make a few mistakes here and there, but I don't expect you, but it'll be okay. Uh, so I thank the Lord uh, for being on on this venue here, invited by the Crockwells, Crock who I know for many years, that we served the Lord together and in the in Council of Nations. And also, I was briefly there after for for that commitment. So I have something I want to share, and I think it's going to be a blessing to people. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, I don't want to take a lot of time, and I don't want to take a lot of uh, detail. I have something that I want to deliver. So I'm, I'm going to do it um, as uh, systematic as I possibly can. So that it doesn't take a lot of time and won't be hard to follow. So we were given the mandate to talk about uh, 2020 and the lessons learned and what we're going to do moving forward. So that's what I want to do with at the moment. Uh, 2020 is for a lot of people for sure. Uh, you know. As a minister and as a pastor, I've been studying the Word of God for many years. I've always been a student of prophecy, always been a student of um, things to come. And our destiny is as a people. So I'm, I am totally up on it. Um, and there are a lot of things that happen that you are not really unaware. 2020, certain things happened. I didn't get the details about that, but of course, we always knew that we were in a time where certain things were going to be, um, you know, unveiled to us. So, you know, according to Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, and we're going to go into a uh, scriptures, we're going to be reading, scriptures, and we're going to try to go through it speedily so that we get all the information out. So where I'm going to start right now is Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. There, uh, the Lord is telling us that surely the world will be something. So we know that the world is and what I've learned in this year was that the Lord, he was sharing things with me and with us, but he didn't give us the particulars. He doesn't always give you the uh, precise uh, workings, what he's going to do. So I won't say that I was going to be with this pandemic and all of that, but I didn't get the details. So it was a little bit, you know, it caught me us a little bit off guard, but we quickly caught up to it because we we're always, we we're always um, seeing what the Lord is doing. So one of the lessons, like I said, that, uh, that I learned is that the Lord will tell you things, and he'll give you information, but He won't always give you the details. So certain things that were happening and that have been happening this year was a little bit surprising because we on, on that. I'm always ready to uh, move what he's preparing for. Preparing. So that's the one big lesson that I, I received in 2020. Now, we know what we're talking about. What I also want to admonish you on just stay with me as I go through all this. Um, some of it is not pleasant. It's not what you would call, you know, 
something fun to hear, but it's the word. It applies to us, it applies to the world, but particularly to the saints. So I'm speaking to the people of God right now. I'm speaking to those people who really uh, love the Lord and have a future with the Lord Jesus in eternity. And before actually we even go into that, I want to thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. He saved us and he's blessed us and our God is a good God. And everybody can be mad. So, um, I want to begin with this question. Uh, where are we right now? As a church, as a people of God, we see all that's going on. And it's, it's, this situation doesn't seem like it's really coming to an end anytime soon. There's a prospect of things happening that you know, it's not pleasant. So where, where are we now as people? Where are we now as church, as um, servants of the Lord Jesus? In my actions, 1 Samuel chapter 8. First something very, 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 very And those of you that have been saying, you know the story that uh, the, the Israelites came to Samuel, who was the prophet, and declared that they wanted to have a king. They wanted a different type of administration over them. So they uh, got their <laughs> together to go to Samuel to tell them, Samuel, we don't want to live this type of life any longer. We see what the rest of the world is doing. We see what everyone else is doing outside of the country, and we want to be like them. So they actually declared that we want to be like the other nations. So they said, Samuel, give us a chance to so be like those people. We don't want to be set apart anymore. We don't want to be. We don't want to have all this prayer. We don't want to have all this serving God and, and denying ourselves and, and you know, being all this spiritual. We're tired of that now. You know, we want to do what everyone else does. So Samuel said to them, he said, why do you why do you want to be why do you want to be like everyone else? Has the Lord been good to you? Has he, has he blessed you? Has he asked you prayer? Has he, Hasn't he give you, given you a destiny? I mean, hasn't, hasn't he done so many things for you that don't you know that there's nowhere else to go? Don't you know he's the God of your salvation? Don't you know that he is your destiny in his hand? So Samuel was, he was confused. He didn't understand. And he preached with the people. He debated with them. But they were determined. Israel determined to know king we want to be like the other people in the earth and so in the end of the conversation praise the lord praise the lord, went to, praise the lord, praise the lord. can you still hear me a lot a lot static, static. on the line, the line. static okay <clears throat> i don't know if i don't you know that you i know you have other devices on around you we have another device Okay, isn't that coming in clear? Can I use another microphone? I see other people saying they can't, they can't hear you clearly. You can't hear me clearly. Okay, so I should ask Woody. Maybe ask. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear you now? Okay, let's try. Let me try now. All right, so they want to be like the other nations. The Lord told them to tell them, give them what you can have what you want. He said, In the name of Jesus. Can you still hear me? Can you, am I good now? I hear you, but there's a lot of in and out. Yeah. Well, there's 
we there's no disturbances in here. It's okay. It's okay. We're praying. We're praying. So, she said, give, give the people what they want. Okay. Uh, Pastor McQueen. Yes. I'm going to. Microphone. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. We're going to come in and out again. All right. I'll wait for you. He's gonna he's gonna drop, drop off the line. Right now. What is that? Jesus, 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 we're going to reconnect. We're going to reconnect. I need your prayer warriors to be praying because this is nothing but an attack of the enemy to stop the message of God that's coming forth from Pastor McQueen. Amen. We're going to reconnect him again. And I need you to be praying. Amen. We've done this before. This attack has came before. But when we connected in the spirit, it silenced the noise, the background. I'm going to be lowering my, my, my volume to make sure, and I have it on mute so that he can come clear. I'm not going to do no speaking so that he can just talk clearly. Okay, we're going to reconnect him again. Let us be in prayer. Let us be in prayer that the background noise will be silent. We silence it in the atmosphere in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry? I'm, I'm requesting him to... I'm requesting him to be added on. So now he just needs to accept. I'm requesting him to be added on. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Pastor McQueen, we now want to add you to the live video as the guest. Please accept. Okay, please accept. Okay, we're adding you on the camera. Okay, so I'm going to try to use this little apparatus. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Go for it. All right. All right. This is better. So I don't know where uh, everyone lost me at, but I'll just start off where I was. I was in 1 Samuel chapter 8, and it was referring to the Israelites wanting to be like the other people in the earth. And Samuel, who was the prophet, said, why do, you, why do you want to be like everyone else? And Samuel went to the Lord, and the Lord told Samuel, Samuel, give the people what they want. If they want to be like everyone else, if, if they want to reject me, that's what they want, give them what they want. But when they do that, tell them, what's going to happen. So that's how our God is. The Lord, the Lord will plead with you, but after a while, if that's what you really want, 
uh, he'll release you to uh, go ahead and then do that. So you can learn, a, you know, a really fine lesson. So this is what, uh, instead of me, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this is what uh, the Lord told Samuel to tell the people. So you want a king. That's not the one that I want for you. I don't want you to be like everyone else. I called you to be set apart. I called you to be different. I called you to be my people. I called you to be uh, those who will, will, will go and witness and spread the word and, and, dr and draw people to the kingdom. I don't want you to be uh, just like them. So, but they were determined. And so the Lord told Samuel, tell them, uh, you can have what you want, but this is what's going to happen when you do that. And this is what the king who you want, this is what he's going to do. So I'm going to outline a couple of those things. And um, because it's concepts and, and principles that the Lord uh, always applies to uh, us, no matter where we are in history, those principles apply to us. And so this is where we are today. So the Lord told um, Samuel to tell the people, when that king comes into power, this is what he's going to do. He's going to take your sons. He's going to take your daughters. He's going to take your fields. He's going to take your money. He's going to take everything that you have. And he's going to exploit you for everything. So let's go ahead on and read a little bit of that. First Samuel chapter eight. If you go to first Samuel chapter eight, uh, verse five. And look there. <coughs> Start there. And then at First at Samuel chapter 7, it says, The Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. In verse number 9, Therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit ye protest solemnly unto them, and show them the number of the king, the manner of the king, that shall reign over them. Amen. So look at verse 11, and he said, this is shall be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He shall take your sons. So, and how it applies to us today, our young people have been captivated by drug abuse, by, by uh, uh, debauchery living, and certain things have been happening to them, seeming like they're being victimized, seemingly like they are being oppressed. And it's a, it's a big issue now. And, and these are the things that God has tried to prevent from happening to the children of the people of God. And then he said he's going to take your daughters and, and he's going he's gonna to exploit them. He's going to exploit everything that you have. So, as we see and we're wondering, we're always wondering why are these things happening to us today? Why are, we, why are the young people suffering like they are? Why are they, why are they behaving like they, they are? Why, why, why it seems like they're, they're being um, the, the victims of, of, of abuse and the victims of, of, of police brutality and all of these different things? It's because the concept of God is the same no matter where you are, no matter what dispensation of time that you're in. When you decide that uh, you don't want to serve God, but you want to be like other people who are not serving God because you think that they have it better than you, you think that that's just the way that they should be, when you should be an example to them to be like you. So what has happened throughout the years and, and the church is we have uh, succumbed to the pressure of the world to be like the world. And so that's why you see ministry, the way that a lot of ministries and how they operate is more on worldly concepts. You know, even the way that service is being conducted and the, and the way that um, certain, certain music and certain styles of worship so it's, uh, and then, and then it's, uh, we're going after more after things than after God. And so that's been a big issue. 
uh, in the last uh, uh, several years. So it will get to a point where God will allow us to have what we want. Uh, after he's pleaded with us for a time, after he's spoken to us, after he's uh, had his prophets prophesied to us, after he's had his preachers preach to us and he's given us time, you know, there, there, will, there will come sort of like a break. And then we're going to have to deal uh, with, with other issues that we didn't have to deal with before. And so that's where we're going to go now uh, when we talk about where are we, we, we are now. Uh, so let's go to the New Testament. Now that we have seen that, we've seen the concept of how the Lord will allow us to um, have to deal with certain things that we didn't have to deal with if we would have just stayed with him, if we would have just continued to serve him, if we would have just continued to let him be our king. Yes. Instead of looking at looking at uh, the systems of this world and going after that and having that be the primary objective of of, of politics and of of money and of prosperity and all of these different things being the primary focus of our lives instead of the Lord, you know, instead of being uh, set apart, separated and and to be sanctified unto him yes. and to serve him. So we've, we've lost our way. And so in terms of that, then we see that now we have put ourselves in a predicament. So now we're in a little bit of a predicament and we have to deal with other things that we didn't have to deal with before or that were not as magnified as before. So we're going to look at a few of those. So if you, those of you that, and I hope you all have your Bibles because we have to read the Bible. So if you look at Acts chapter 14, look at Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Did you want, did you want to read for me? Yes. Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. We're going to start from there. We're going to try to go a little bit fast. Uh, It says, Con confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So now uh, we, we have the concept of suffering and tribulation to make it in. So that's going to be more of a uh, more of an issue for us now because of the decisions that we have made. So we're reaping what we sow. We're reaping the effects of the decisions that we've made. So that's one thing that we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to deal with tribulation, certain tribulation that we didn't have to deal with before, certain issues that we didn't have to handle before. Because we put ourselves in that camp, because we put ourselves in that in that area, because we've rejected the path that the Lord put us on. So now we're on this other path. So whatever's on that path, we have to deal with, right? So now, the Lord even told us Timothy, in Second Timothy chapter two and verse three, that we have to endure hardness as a good soldier. So everything is not going to be easy as it used to be before. So now things are getting hard and people are feeling like, you know, why, why is these things happening? It's really, it really, uh, you know, it's getting tough now. And, you know, we were used to the church being kind of um, insulated from a lot of things, but we're not being insulated anymore. So when I have to deal with some hard things and, and, and hard decisions that we have to make, um, in order in order to just continue on and um, so we see that um, so let's look at also second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12 so let's go ahead and read that one second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12 so the Lord says that if we suffer we shall also reign with him amen if we deny him he will also deny us so 
now we we are in this intense um, realm of suffering because because we kind of see that you know people are getting sick. Yes. People are dying. Uh, people people are 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 losing their homes. People are losing their jobs. Certain things are happening to the saints that they never thought would happen to them or on an intensified, you know, basis. So these are things that uh, because we didn't stay on this uh, path that the Lord had us on, now we have to deal with a lot of things that we never had to deal with before. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's causing people not to really understand but the concepts and principles of the word of God does not change. Amen. So even though you may see that, uh, you know, you have the Old Testament, you have the children of Israel, you have the Lord, you have the Lord dying for our sins, you have now we're, we're mm-hmm. under grace. Nevertheless, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Yes. So the principles of God don't change. They always apply to us. We make certain decisions, and we don't... Um, we don't fix ourselves or we don't repent and we don't change and get back to where we supposed to be. Now we have to, to deal with some things that we never had to deal with before. And this is where we are today. So we're dealing with tribulation. We're dealing, dealing with hardness. We're dealing with suffering and people are, people are also, also dying. Yes. We wonder why, why, why are um, people who love God, People who pray, people who are been saved their whole life, uh, they seemingly don't do anything wrong. They're dying from a from a pandemic, from from they're dying from a virus. Yes. And uh, on a mass scale, and every time you look around, somebody's somebody's leaving. Um, so this is something that um, it's 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 now become a part of the culture of service. We have the good things, but now we also have to deal with these things. And that's what uh, Samuel was telling the, the people of God. You don't want to go there. You don't, you don't want to be like the other nations because they're, they're, they're going to have to deal with some, some things that, that it's going to be pretty bad that you don't have to deal with. You're only looking at the things of the flesh. You're only looking at the things that look pleasurable and you want to take part in that. But there, there are some, something, some other things that uh, he's trying to keep you from yes. that. But they were determined. They were determined that they wanted to be like those people. They wanted to be like the Gentiles. They wanted to follow after them. They wanted to be like the world, you see. And they wanted to um, have what the world had. And they wanted to uh, dress like them and look like them and act like them. And, and and be be in the church at the same time. And so Samuel said, look, it doesn't it doesn't work. It's not gonna work like that. But if that's what you want, and I've and I've and I've pleaded with you, then God, the Lord said, go and do that. So we're dealing with those things today, and we're dealing with a lot of what is happening in these last days. Um, but we have a great future. The church has a future. The church has a, um, a destiny. But how do Amen. we turn the situation around is the question. How do, we, how do we fix it? How do we get back to where we should, we should be? Um, one thing that we know, we're coming to the end of this age. Amen. We're coming to the end of the time of the Gentiles. Hmm. And so as we come to that end... There, there's, um, there's, there's turmoil that before um, the coming of the Lord, before the millennial age, before the Lord comes back um, to reclaim what is his. But before he does that, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen that are not pleasant. And so how, we, how, how do we respond to that? Um, and I say... Moving forward, which is one of the questions that was posed, what do we do moving forward, and what do we, and, and how do we respond? The Lord is always telling His people that they should repent. He's always yes. telling us that we should, um, you know, return unto Him, and that's what the prophets were always telling Israel. 
you've strayed far. You've gone over here to try to be something that you were not created to be. You tried to do something that you were not uh, destined to do. Get back to God. Get yes, back to get the back things to that God. you know. Um, can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Get back to get back to where the Lord called you to be. Get back on the path to your destiny. Amen. Repent yes. and Amen. listen to the voice of God. Yes. And and deny yourself and separate yourself from separate those things yourself. of the Gentiles. Yeah, no, don't no. do those things. Don't 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 follow their example. Don't follow the example of the Word of God. Yeah, no, follow no. the example of the prophets and yes. the and the kings and the, follow the example of the apostles. Yes. Follow the example of Jesus. Listen to the word of God. Get, get back. Get, get back, back to where he was calling you to, to be and to do. Repent and change. And in that way, the things that are coming upon the earth, the things that are coming upon the world, God, he's going to protect us. He's going to keep us. He's going to shield us. And he's going to uh, allow us to be a part of his eternal kingdom, which is soon to come. There is a millennial kingdom. He's coming to reign on this earth for 1,000 years when he comes back. And we who are, are here, or we who are going to be raptured up, we're going to come back with him. And we're going to administer this earth. We're going to be um, the, the rulers of this earth with the Lord Jesus right here on this same planet before the new heaven and the new earth. So he's preparing his people for that. He's preparing us who have been listening. He's preparing us who have been watching and praying. We know we have a good future. We know that this is not the end. We know that, uh, you know, this is, this, is not, this is not our destiny. So we're remaining encouraged and we're fighting the good fight of faith moving forward. We're serving God. And we're, we're concentrating on the word of God where the Bible says that we're going to reign with him. And he said, if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. He's going to bring uh, uh, a thousand years of peace and of joy and of, of, of the, the word of God is going to be uh, spread throughout the world. And we're going to, helping him, we're going to be with the Lord Jesus administering that. And so there's a lot of misunderstanding today. There's a lot of... Um, confusion about about the, the scriptures there are people who don't believe the bible anymore because they're just tired of of going through these things they're just tired of of seeming like the lord is taking such a long time to do what he's doing to answer prayers or to come back people people are are given up they are are going into the rudiments of the world they are accepting the world's philosophies and 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 all of these different all of these different um, um, rudiments and believing stuff because they're they they're they have lost their faith they've gotten tired they've gotten weary but the Lord told us not to be weary in well doing because we would reap if we faint not don't give up keep on fighting keep on believing keep on praying and no matter what happens God will strengthen you and He will get you through. And even if you see people falling on your right side, falling on your left side, even if you see things are happening and you don't, don't understand, trust me when I tell you, he understands. If you don't know, he knows. And it's better for him to know than, than you to know. So if you don't know, don't worry about it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. And lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. And he will direct your path. So we don't have to be afraid of a pandemic. We don't have to be afraid of, uh, of economic um, turmoil or political instability or someone coming along that seems like they don't have our interest in mind. And we don't care about any of that because we have our God. God is the Lord Jesus is our God. The Lord Jesus is our king. The Lord Amen. Jesus is our leader. So Amen. we're not following anybody else but Jesus. So it Amen. doesn't matter what this one is doing. It doesn't matter who got voted out and who got voted in. It doesn't matter um, who's responding to you and who's not, who's giving you money and who's not. Our God is our provider. Glory. Jesus is the one 
that lets you in and lets you out. He is the one that gives you what you need. He is the one that is, uh, the earth is the Lord, the Bible says. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. Come on, Praise the name of the Lord. And we are inheritors. We are the sons and daughters of the God that created all things. We don't have to worry about our substance. We don't have to worry about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink or what we're going to wear. Because the Bible said it's the Gentiles that worry about those things. It's the Gentiles that come up with all these plans and schemes to get money and to get wealth and to stop somebody else from getting it so they can have it, to stop somebody else, to block somebody else from getting to a place of, of, of abundance so they can get there. That's the Gentiles. We don't operate that like that as a church. We trust our God and we listen to the voice of God. And the, the, the Lord will lead you and guide you into all of the truth that's for you. He will speak to you. He will, he will be the lamp unto your feet and the light into your pathway. Isn't that right? He Amen. will lead you and guide you. Praise the Lord. So we have to trust in him no matter what is happening, even if we don't understand, because there are a lot of things that we won't understand because the Lord will give us, like, like we read in, in Amos, the Lord will speak to his prophets, but oftentimes he won't give you all of the details. He will tell you things, but he won't give you everything because we don't, have the full mind of God. Even the word of God says that no man knows the day or the hour when the son of man cometh. We know that he's coming, he told us, but we don't know exactly when. We don't have those details, but we know he's coming. So our job is to trust and believe in him, wait on him and serve him and occupy until he comes. That's what we're supposed to do. Even though we might have to deal with some hardness, we might have to deal with some tribulation, we might have to deal with some suffering. That's because of certain decisions that we've made, and we have to endure that until he brings us out, because he's going to bring us out. He's going to deliver us. He's going to help us. Amen. He's a very present help Amen. in a time of trouble. Amen. We may be in, there may be trouble, but he's the help in trouble. Praise the Lord. Praise and the so Lord. That, that's how we live. That's how we live over here. We, we're not, we're not, we don't live in fear. We don't live in anxiety. We don't, we don't live in, in, in lack. We don't live in any of that because we depend on him and trust in him. And he's a God that cannot lie. Come Praise on. the Lord. Amen. His word is true. And he proves it to us as we begin, as we stand on his word, as we continue to serve him and trust him and live according to the word of God. And we're, we're looking forward to his return. So, Praise the Lord. We're not looking forward to uh, anything that any man is going to do. We're not looking forward to anybody who's going to be in any political office. We're looking forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's that, that is our ultimate goal, to hear the words. You've been faithful in a few things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, and I'm going to bless you with many things. Praise the Lord. Praise That's the what Lord. we're going to do. We have to continue to believe. We have to continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hey, glory. Praise God. And as Sister uh, uh, Rupi has talked about some of the things uh, that it, in that I that I the Lord has helped me to do. I couldn't have done any of that without God. Amen. I could not have survived any of that without God. All the while I'm trusting in the Lord. All the while when it looked like it's the end. When it looked like we're not going to make it back. When it when everybody was forecasting so many people were going to die. So many people were not going to come back so many people were not going to be the same Amen. and nevertheless nevertheless the lord was good to us the lord blessed us he brought us back he brought us he brought us out praise the name of the lord with the victory Amen. glory to god and so don't look forward to me going anywhere else 
except continue to follow my God. I'm Glory. going to trust him. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be faithful unto death. Because even if I die, praise the Lord, death will have no sting. Even if I die, the grave will have no victory over me. Come on. Because now. I'm going to receive my ultimate blessing, which is to live and reign with him forever and forever and forever. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. And Praise so everything Lord. that we're doing now, all that we do now and all that we're dealing with right now, Praise the Lord. It doesn't it doesn't frighten us. It doesn't scare us. It doesn't it doesn't oppress us because we already knew that we we were going to come to the last days and the Lord already warned us. He told us perilous times will come. He told us we're going to be under pressure. He told us, praise the Lord, that there are certain things that were going to take place. So he didn't we we were not caught unawares in terms of that praise god you may not see all of the little particulars but they're even not important what's important is he already told us he told us to stand fast in the liberty where he has made us free Amen. he told us to press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling that's all he keeps telling us to rejoice in the lord praise the lord to serve the lord with gladness to praise him he all that's all he wants us to do is right. to serve him and be examples of people of God and win souls to the kingdom of God. And so we will continue to do that. Praise the Lord. Praise we will continue Lord. to serve God. Praise Amen. The Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, mind tell you all of the prayer warriors online and all those that's going to listen throughout the whole day because. We, are, we have rose up early. Hallelujah. This yes. is District Elder Michael McQueen, a warrior in the U.S. Army, and became a warrior in the Army of the Lord. And he is going forth focused oh and moving God. forward. When God told me to call you, like you said, the prophets, they only receive caution. But God has the big picture. When God said, call him, Hallelujah. Mm. This is yes. the word barrier that came forth. Hallelujah. When he said yes, he had to hear that yes, God is calling him to come forth. And we thank God that this is the first of many online ministries that's coming in. <laughs> Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, Jesus. we thank you in the name of Jesus. Jesus Lord, we, we thank, thank you. Highly as a district elder Michael McQueen. Lord, when you told me to call him, you told me to thank call you. a warrior in the army Glory. of the Lord. Bless he your name, Jesus. He said he's been laboring overseas. He's yes, seasoned. Lord. He had his seed in the rest. Now he must come forth. I have need of him in this coming season. I need warriors on the battlefield. Glory to God. Stiff Thank faith you, Jesus. To speak to the demonic you, enemies and preach the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for souls coming into the kingdom. Jesus. And they're coming in by force. I said they're coming thank in you, by Jesus. force because you're going to preach, hallelujah, the word of God without you, apologies. In thank you, Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. Lord, keep him healthy Jesus. and strong. Yes. Use him yes. in these end times glory. for your glory. Thank you. In Jesus, mighty name, we thank you for the form Jesus. of God on him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus, Jesus. mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Thank, thank you, Lord. You. We're Glory. praying for the armed force. We're praying for the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. We're praying for warriors that's on the battlefield right now. Yes, yes, yes. We're praying yes, for the people yes. WNMIA. Is that comfortable? Yes. For the blood still yes. cries out where they have died at. And we're yes. praying that those bones be found and return to their family. We're praying yes. for prisoners that's right now still in prison in all different yes. places of the country. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. I want Thank you to you, close Lord. out and pray for our armed forces. Pray for Thank our health care workers. Because yes. we know yes, God Lord. is a healer. People come yes. for vaccination, but we know yes. who the healer is first. That's yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory Hallelujah. to God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless bless those who are who are out on the battlefield and out helping and out doing all that they can to be a support of those, oh God, that are trying to help and those who are, oh God, sacrificing themselves, those who are working tirelessly to help the sick and the wounded, those who are on the front line, those who, oh God, have given themselves up, oh God, given up their time, given up, oh God, their rest, given up, oh God, all, all of the pleasures of life so that they can help others. We thank you for them today. And we pray for those, oh God, that even are sick and even fallen ill. And those, oh God, that have relatives that they can't reach because yes, of the I'll protocols. Oh God, bless their hearts, touch them and give them peace <laughs> and give them rest in this time where they don't understand why these things are happening and they don't understand oh god why they're being treated like this but show them oh god that this what they're dealing with is for a season and that you are going to keep them and that you are going to bless them and that you are going oh god to care for your people you're going to take care of them you have not abandoned them you have not given up on them Praise the name of the Lord. Give them strength. Give strength. them the faith. Help them to have endurance, to deal with the hardness, yes, to Lord. deal, oh God, with the tribulation, to deal, oh God, on a level, on a certain level that we, oh God, must go through. But as we go through, we shall come forth, oh God, as pure gold. Help us to see the end result help us oh god to press forth to that time where we will see the gold uh, hallelujah so that we will see oh god the victory in the the name of jesus that we are going oh god and we're going to look back and we won't even remember that we went through any of this we won't even it would be a small thing it would be a passing thing that the blessings that will come Oh, God will not even be in to be compared to the glory the that glory. shall be revealed in us. Help us to look forward to that glory. Help us, Lord God, to arise. arise. Even in this time, arise and arise. shine. In a time where it seems like it's darkness around that, let us shine brightly, oh God, like the city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid Help us to be lights. Help us to be uh, people who would encourage others. Help us, oh God, to be encouraged, to encourage ourselves in the Lord and and let the world know that our God, he's the only true and living God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The smoke settles, that when everything settles, Jesus will be the only God standing. He will be the only God reigning. The Lord Jesus is his name. In the name, oh God, we declare the power that is in us to do, oh God, what the Lord has commissioned us to do on this earth. And we thank you, oh God, for calling us even to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is our time. Yes. This is our time to shine. Our time. This is our time to arise and to be great and to do those things, oh God, that you have been preparing Amen. us to do. This great is experience. our time. We that are here, this is our time. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. To get the victory, to spread the gospel, oh. to show the world that that Jesus is Lord. Jesus. Praise the name of the of Jesus. That miracles can still happen. That people can still be healed. That we can still lay hands on the sick and they still can be re- to recovered. Praise the name of the Lord. That there's no pandemic. That there's no virus. That Jesus does not have the victory over. I declare that this thing that's being made to be like a big monster. That it is nothing. It is nothing to the Lord Jesus and that we have the victory over it and that it will not defeat us in the name of Jesus. And we are not giving up. We are not turning around, but we are going forward. 
fullness of power and strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name, the people of God said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and be well. Praise the name of the Lord. Be strong. Glory to God. And look forward to good things happening. Yes. Look forward to look forward to blessings. Look forward, even even if you can't see it with your eyes, because the Bible tells us that. The things that are temporal, temporal, we see with our with our eyes, but the things that are eternal, we see in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's become more spiritual. Let's focus more on the spirit because those are the things that are going to last. Thank you. Lord. The grass faded, the flower withered, but the word of God will last forever. Praise and that's Lord. what we want to do. We Thank want you. to go on. We don't want to come to a sad end. We want to go on forever and ever with the Lord because he promised us we are his children. We are the inheritors of all things. Right. So we don't have to give in to the forecast of the world, of the doom and gloom, of, of, of things falling apart, of things going away, of things being taken away. Glory to God. We don't, we don't give in to that because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. And we are his sons and daughters. Amen. So as Amen. we are ending the royal watchman, hallelujah, we're going to play the, the song that we play every time we begin. Amen. Because the word has come forth. It's just a time of worship. Honey, you have anything to say? Oh, no. Who has anything to say behind that? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Mm. This man in his honor tonight, everybody that can get on your feet. To him who sits on the throne, not to the Lamb. To the King of Kings yeah, and the Lord of Lords, mm. we bless you tonight. For the powerful, powerful, everybody powerful lift your word. hands just for a moment. Come on. Glory. Thank you. Let's what an encouragement. Amen. We're just going to close out with the same song we play. We thank everyone who has come. We are close out with praise and we close out with worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
We want to acknowledge his wife, Pastor Anne Marie McQueen. We want to acknowledge Pastor Anne Marie McQueen, his wife, who she didn't get a chance to come on the screen. But we want to say praise the Lord. We love you. God bless Amen. you. God bless you. Amen. Another powerful <laughs> warrior in the Lord, in the army of the Lord. I mean, there's the two of them. Can you imagine? Glory. Hallelujah. We praise God. We see some powerful prophets and prophetess. Amen. Uh, the Townsend. God bless you. Derek, we see you. We wish you could have blown the show for Hallelujah. But you'll get an opportunity to blow it in 2021 for us. And the next Royal Watchman, he's another awesome veteran of the armed forces. Praise God. We thank you for your service to our outstanding awesome nation. Amen. Thank you. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God. Our God. Yes, our God, our King, our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. We want to just thank everyone who has come on the wall. You're watching. And again, I just want to thank everyone who has participated in Operation My Brother's Keeper. They have received their Christmas cards in Germany and has been truly been a blessing of greetings. And, honey, do you have anything else to say? Oh, no, I just think that. I, I want to thank everyone for staying with us for this time. It was worth it. But that word was a word that was in season. It was a season word. Amen. It was a now word in the name of Jesus. And it was a great encouragement. Thank you, Lord. And so I would ask that if you, you see this, that you, you send this word to your friends, to your family. Hallelujah. That you send it. Send it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This was a word for the church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Again, we thank you. Amen. We see you, District Elder Michael McQueen. God said, come forth. And you came forth. He knows what's inside you. Glory. You said in your own words, arise. And we thank God. Hallelujah. That you have come forth on your assignment. Amen. We this is the Royal Watchman. We thank you that we pray every morning at 3 a.m. We are up 3 a.m. praying for the armed forces, our president and the elect president, and widows and veterans in the nursing homes, after duty, hallelujah of all the branches, the off the surgeon and general which is the nation's doctor holding the office of the Surgeon General, public health. Amen. God bless you. Again, I see you, Pastor Anne Marie Queen. That is Pastor District Elder Michael McQueen's wife. Again, I acknowledge her and thank her as well. Amen. I think it's time to sign God off. Bless you. Uh, we just thank everyone who stayed to listen. It was truly a blessing. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, this is Warrior Watchmen. God bless you. Bye-bye.